We hear so much about metabolic health, but how do you know if you're metabolically healthy? So in today's video, what we're gonna do is talk about a new at-home way to assess your degree of metabolic health. It's a new at-home hemoglobin A1C test. So I wanna share with you what that test reflects, what that test means, and really what is the hemoglobin A1C and how does it reflect your overall state of so-called metabolic health? So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but over the years, we've talked about insulin resistance, metabolic inflexibility. We talked about glycemic variability. So that is, you know, the ebb and flow. If your blood sugar maybe goes from a fasting of, of 82 when you wake up and it goes up to 140 after you eat and then it comes back down in the postman window because you over secreted insulin because you're eating hyper palatable ultra processed foods. Why that ebb and flow is so problematic and how the hemoglobin A1C test is more of a reflection of your baseline blood sugar levels. So as your blood sugar increases, sugar has the ability to glycosylate or attach on to different proteins. And it turns out that that degree of glycosylation can be measured on your red blood cells. And that's reflected in this test called the hemoglobin A1C test. And what I'll do is I'll link a little coupon code and the, the link to actually test in the convenience of your own home or your workplace or whatever, there's three different tests in here. You can test your hemoglobin A1C three different times over the next, say, six months to see if you can improve your body's state of metabolic health because this is really important, friends. We've talked about glycemic variability as a risk factor or an underlying health condition for poor outcomes, increased need for hospitalization, increased probability of ending up in the ICU and even dying if you get exposed to the current public health problem, which by the way, is endemic, it's not going away. It is not going away, friends. Google the word endemic and the C-19 and you will find experts all throughout the world agree. It's not going away. So what that means, friends, is we need to become more metabolically and immunologically healthy. And one way to do that is to make better nutrition and lifestyle choices, starting with your exercise, your nutrition, your stress reduction, and your sleep. The big four. Again, exercise, nutrition, stress reduction, and sleep. Because blood sugar is regulated by our how we manage our stress, how are we balance our body's circadian clock system and circadian rhythms, the foods that we eat and the movements that we do or don't do. These all influence your blood sugar levels. So let's talk a little bit more about what the hemoglobin A1C test is, why it's important and why you should care. So the hemoglobin A1C test, as I just sort of alluded to, it is reflective of the amount of sugar that is glycosylating, meaning being attached to. So sugar reacts. Both, both glucose and fructose. This is why fructose can, uh, fructose sweetened beverages are so problematic because they fructosylate. They can attach to various proteins. So there's actually a test that Ron Rosedale has talked about since like 2006 called the fructosylated albumin test, which is actually very accurate. It's for, not too many labs actually run this, but that is another good test, especially for people who have microvascular disease or prediabetes or strong family risk factors for, for conditions that are linked with poor metabolic health, like a mild cognitive impairment, dementia, cancer, autoimmunity, heart disease, you know, even poor outcomes with COVID-19. So that's why we should care about this. You know, We know that these diseases take a long time to develop. I mean, years and years and years. So if you have persistently elevated glucose levels and that glucose is reacting with your bodily tissues and glycosylating and causing what's known as, well, it's activating a receptor known as the receptor for advanced glycation end products, the RAGE receptor. So I, it's kind of crazy to think about, but this is one of the many ways that glucose can be pro-inflammatory. It literally stimulates immunologic receptors known as the RAGE receptor, the receptor for advanced glycation end products. If you don't believe me, go into PubMed and check it out. This is phenomenal. So you don't exercise, you get crappy sleep, you're stressed out, you're watching the news all the time, you're freaked out, what's going on in the world? And so your glucose levels are rising and guess what happens? They're reacting with your bodily tissues. In that reactionary process, you're, you're increasing your baseline level of inflammation by stimulating this receptor. You're also functionally causing alterations in your bodily proteins. So you learn in, in biology 101, structure equals function, okay? So if you are glycosylating all of your tissues, because your blood sugar is elevated, you're changing the structure and therefore the function of those different proteins. So you know that protein is just one change in an amino acid residue or its degree of glycosylation or fructosylation can alter its function. Yeah, this is really structure function relationship. Again, prove me wrong, go into PubMed and search for yourself. This is biology 101. So you can now see how a common underlying health condition 
that is linked with chronic conditions like mild cognitive impairment, dementia, heart disease, cancer, and so forth, is high blood sugar levels or insulin resistance. And you can also see how individuals who have alterations in their blood sugar levels have worse outcomes when they get infected with the with the bug that's circulating right now. And I have tons of data to share with you about that specific aspect about how high levels of hemoglobin A1C are linked with poor outcomes. And this was known back in 2003 when the you know when the, the MERS outbreak, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, which is a, a related coronavirus, um, it was a risk factor for morbidity and mortality known back in 2003. Here we are, just to remind you, it's 2021. So we've known this for a long time. So let's dive into the research. So hemoglobin A1C was first introduced in the American Diabetes Association Diagnostic Criteria of Diabetes in 2010. Okay, so what you want to aim for in terms of levels, this is going to give you a percentage. By the way, mine was 4.8. So just to, I'm, I don't want to toot my horn, but I do want to let you guys know, I exercise a lot. I walk, I ate a low-carb diet. I go to bed at the same time, 10 o'clock every night. I go in the sauna. So I do a lot of things to make myself feel better. And you should be doing these things too, by the way. But guess what? It also is reflective in these biomarkers, in these tests. So um, the rate at which your hemoglobin A1C is increasing uh, is negatively associated with you know, aging processes and is linked with poor longevity. So you want to strive for under 5%. Now, the cut point for diabetes is 6.5%. So you know, your friends, your family who are all about staying safe and they're masking, they're, they're reducing their exposure, they're doing all this stuff. They need to know their hemoglobin A1C levels, friends, because guess what? A high level of, he of hemoglobin A1C is reflective or indicates poor metabolic health, which is a risk factor for poor outcomes, okay? So if you want to stay safe and you're masking and you're sanitizing and you got all that, then you want to also test your metabolic health and just follow the links below and check this out from biocoach.io. There's There are awesome people here. This will give you an insight. Now, what's cool about tests is they're a wake-up call. They let you know that wow, I, I thought I was eating healthy, but I guess I'm something's wrong here. Um, and so that's what's really important about this. Now, what's interesting about the hemoglobin A1C test is it's representing an average blood glucose levels uh, within a two to three month period. So, you know, we can all have perfectly normal glucose levels if we clean up our act a few days before we go get our annual physical and our doctor tests our, you know, blood glucose, but if the hemoglobin A1C is off, that's more of an indicator of your sort of long-term blood glucose level. So a really important test. But what's interesting is this can be used as a prognostic risk factor to sort of stratify or identify high-risk people when it comes to this current public health problem. So um, these researchers go on to say, uh, therefore, the hemoglobin A1C is a reliable diagnostic parameter for and a quick identifier uh, for the background glucose metabolic state in severe and critical patients with the current public health uh, virus. Now, because diabetes is one of the most common comorbidities in patients with COVID-19 and is associated with poor outcomes, the hemoglobin A1C testing at admission can provide important information for patient assessment and help identify those who have not been diagnosed but are at greater risk. Those really important. Tons of articles here uh, that we can talk about. So now they go in mechanistically to talk about how glucose spikes are known to promote the secretion of inflammatory mediators and, and all of this. So really important stuff here. But there's just tons of data here showing an, a higher hemoglobin A1C levels are linked with linear uh, increased risk for mortality and worse outcomes with this current public health problem. Tons of data here. So you need to know your hemoglobin A1C test. Now, if you recently went to your doctor and you tested it, that's fine. Yep, you know, within the last 90 days, if you're like, well, it needed some work or it's good, your triglycerides are also low, fine, you probably don't need to test this. But if you haven't had blood work in the last year, do yourself and your family a favor by looking at your hemoglobin A1C levels. This, I think the test here is like $79. Um, so you can go and just click the link below, use the coupon code HIH10 to save on that. And guess what, friends? This will give you feedback. It's biofeedback. It's a biometric of health. And it will let you know if you need to make changes with your diet. You know, maybe you don't buy those ice cream. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't make those cookies. Maybe you start taking walks after your meals. Like there's super simple things that you can do. And I found honestly, regular exercise to be the most, most important factor at, at keeping glycemic levels low, dropping those triglycerides, those liver enzymes and hemoglobin A1C. So um, tons of data here. I'll link some of the references, but I want to encourage you to and empower you to improve your health and especially metabolic health. Metabolic health is the cornerstone of all health because the, your your metabolism affects your brain, 
Uh, it, it affects inflammation. It affects your immune system. It affects your heart. I mean, it, it, it crosses into all these different domains and subspecialties of medicine. And so if your metabolic health is off, it's well, very probable and likely that there's other organ systems in your body that are critical for longevity and health span that are also off as well. And so if you don't know that it's off, you don't know what you don't know. So please take action on this. Test your hemoglobin A1C levels. If you decide not to do this one, at least go to your doctor and, and get the test and see. Um, but if you don't like getting phlebotomy and all that every three months to, as you improve your nutrition and lifestyle, then you can do this at-home test. It's just a simple blood prick. And you'll have the, the results in less than five minutes with this at-home meter. And there's three different... Um, test samples in there. So you can test one here, um, then do another one in 60 days, and another one in 90 days after that, potentially to see where, you know, you, where your trends are going and where your health is going. So friends, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit that like button, share this with a friend or family member who wants to stay safe, but is not really making those healthy lifestyle choices that you know they should be because it's very important that we all are eating healthier foods, dropping that glycemic variability, not having these big ebbs and flows and blood sugar levels that lead to hyperinsulinemia and, and all of that. Uh, really important for many aspects of health. I'm grateful that you tuned in. We'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now. <laughs>